production, not on manufacturing, but actually people spending money. And as uh, the brother said before me, um, they're, they're, we, we are consumer people, but we have to change that mentality. We have to be manufacturers and supporters of each other in business. We have to be aware of the social environment, the cultural environment, the demographics, how other people, how other communities, how other people in our community impact our business. Uh, I had a conversation with my barber um, uh, as I was preparing for the comments that I'm going to, that I'm making to you today, and I, I, I just asked, I said, "What are what are some of the challenges that you face as a as a as a business person?" He happens to be a young man who owns a couple of barber shops, and he said to me, "Rod, well, one of my biggest challenges is that the the people that work for me have a sense of entitlement. They believe that I owe them something that they haven't worked for." <laughs> And if, if, you, if, you, if you're, you're paying attention to what's happen, happening uh, demographically, the Latino community is, is a growing community, a very united community, and much of our focus, even from the White House, is focused on the, on the, the Latino or the immigrant community. Because that community is growing, they're becoming productive, they're becoming more powerful politically, and there's no reason for anybody to be leapfrogging us uh, in this country. One of the other things he said to me was there were right uh, marketing and, and, th and, and there's going to be someone here today to talk about marketing, not just marketing but the market that we're involved in. H how well do we know that market? And how well do we re reach out to that market? What, what means of communication do we use to reach out to that market? And there's the, 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 the means of communication is changing as we know print media is, is moving by the wayside. Uh, uh, how are we engaged in networking? How, how, how much do we engage in social media? Uh, one of the brothers said earlier in a meeting that we were having, um, and I think uh, Brother David alluded to this, there are, uh, uh, for meetings like this, there is a, a registration fee, and it's normally kind of high, but that's not happening today. But the brother mentioned that there can be some live, live uh, streaming to some of those very important meetings that take place by trade associations and others that we may be, that we may benefit from. So we 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 have to be aware of how we use social media, uh, how we uh, use our lobbying efforts. I gave the example in the meeting this morning, uh, politically speaking. If you're not involved in trade associations or other lobbying groups that may have some impact on your business, there may come uh, uh, down the line a tax to you and you wonder how it got there. So the example I used was that of a laundry business or a dry cleaning business. Uh, in the state of Illinois where most of us are located, if you're not involved in, in trade associations that deal with the dry cleaning or the laundry business, the people in Springfield may pass, pass a tax on your particular business and we wonder why, why are my tax is increasing. Well, we were not there to argue against the tax on, on that laundry business or that dry cleaning business. Uh, one of the other things that, that, that kind of caught my attention that, that my father uh, said to me a long time ago and it has stayed with me and it's in reference to the way African Americans spend, spend uh, their money. The question was asked about uh, who's, who was running the business in Medina and uh, who's running the business uh, community in America. Well my father used to say to me, he spent some time in New York, he said well you know let me tell you about New York. He said the Jews run it, they own it, the Irish run it, and the blacks enjoy it. And that has always stayed with me because, you know, that, that is something that, that uh, we need to think about in terms of how we expend our resources. Now let me speak a little bit about, because I, I sit on a number of, of, of boards and commissions that, uh, that handle large sums of money, uh, billions of dollars. And part of my role as a member of our community is to try to open doors for businesses, African American owned businesses that are involved in many aspects of the business world. 
I'm part of what we call the Emerging Managers uh, Committee on a number of these boards and commissions. Well, Emerging Managers just simply means non-whites. So if you are an emerging manager or you're an emerging business, then we need to talk because it, we, we uh, invest in all areas, real estate, transportation, there's a whole list of, of businesses that allow businesses involved in. Uh, we have as part of our portfolio real estate investment. If you have shopping malls or centers that, that we're developing and they're productive, they're viable, they're turning a profit, we need to talk because I need to be able to open a door for you to have a conversation with someone who was looking at our real estate portfolio and said, well, look, here's a viable business. It's an African-American, a female-owned business, and we can perhaps do some business. And, and, and those kinds of things out there. A little bit about the, the U.S. Uh, economy uh, on, on the global level, because some of you, as, as you've mentioned, travel to many parts of the world, including China. Um, I get a number of reports from a number of different investment companies, advisors, etc., about the economy, what are the economic trends, uh, what we should be looking to invest in, etc. So these numbers here are primarily from the fourth quarter of this year. Uh, they're predicting that the gross national product for our country, that's, that's the total uh, amount of goods and services produced in the country, is only going to grow about 1 to 2 percent and that we're not going to be able to rely on government as much as we have in the past. Many of us are in, in public entities. The federal government is cutting back on the amount of resources available. State governments are cutting back. Uh, the housing market is it's just starting to recover. So the resources from government, if you're involved in government, are not there like they used to be. And given the economic climate with our president and his fight with, uh, with the recalcitrant uh, Tea Party and Republican Party, those resources are not going to be there like they used to be. Uh, for those of you who are involved in auto sales, auto sales are up. Housing sales and construction is up and is increasing. Um, and just recently, uh, I received a report that it's, it's uh, less expensive to buy a home now if you're in the market for a home than it is to rent. During the market downturn, as you, you, you may know, it was, it was a lot less expensive to rent than to own because of people uh, losing their homes uh, because of, of foreclosures and, and uh, uh, people being underwater. New job creation averaged about 140,000 uh, per month. Uh, manufacturing growth is stabilizing. That's, those are some of the, the things that are happening in the country, outside the country. Again, there was uh, some conversation about China. Economic growth is increasing in China. Uh, China has, has faced some, some uh, inflation uh, problems uh, over the past uh, few years. The central bank in China just lowered its interest rate because they're, they're interested now in stimulating economic growth. And this is not just true for China. This is true for India and many uh, Latin American countries that we may do some business with. Uh, I'm going to conclude by um, <clears throat> sharing with you a conversation that was had with the students of Hampton University. Um, no, this wasn't Hampton University, was it, Glow? This was North Carolina A&T University. Where Thank you. Oh, are you from That's there? That's where the resource come from. Okay, all right. So this is uh, North Carolina A&T University, where my youngest daughter just graduated from uh, this year. The, uh, the speaker there uh, gave the young people there a very good conversation about, uh, and her topic was that you need to be the CEO of your life. And so she went on to talk about what does that mean? What is the CEO, the chief executive officer of your life? She said, well, you know, here are some of the duties of the CEO. The CEO, they set the vision for the company. So as an individual who, who's graduated from one of these universities, you have to set your vision. And this applies to all of us generally. You have to set your vision for how you want to conduct your life. 
The CEO is also responsible for